Pop, pop. Can't help about the shape I'm in I can't sing, I ain't pretty And my legs are thin Don't ask me what I think of you I might not give the answer that you want me to Yeah, it's a camera. Join me, if you will, in Ephesians chapter 5, beginning here at verse 22. And let's look at this picture. We're going to have to paint with some broad strokes because of the time limitations. But I want you to see this picture that we're intended to paint for our culture. Some things that our culture needs to see from us and needs to hear from us. And oh, by the way, our culture is desperate to see this from us and hear this from us. Why? Because marriages are falling apart. We have a marital wasteland all around us in our culture. It's not working. And our culture is desperate for some answers. Now, they may not like the answers that we have to give. However... God's the one who designed marriage. He knows how to make it work. Now when I talk to God, I know he understands. He said, stick by me, I'll be your guiding hand. Don't ask me what I think of you. I might not give the answer that you want me to. Who thought I'd pick my nose? Look beginning in verse 22. Wives, submit to your own husbands as to the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, his body, and is himself its Savior. Now as the church submits to Christ, so also wives should submit in everything to their husbands. Now let me say something briefly here about this passage of Scripture. Number one, I know that this is perhaps the least popular passage of Scripture in the New Testament for many people. If you can't say amen, you ought to say ouch. It's the least popular passage of scripture. We just don't like this passage of scripture. It's in there and we just don't like it. We want it to go away. It's just not right. And the reason it's not a popular passage of scripture is twofold. Number one, we don't understand what it means. And secondly, we don't keep reading. Amen. We don't understand what it means and we don't keep reading. What do you mean we don't keep reading? Here, here's what I want you to do, ladies. I want you to look at that little paragraph right there. It's that little old measly paragraph that has to do with what you're called to do in this context. You show me how big that is in your Bible. About that, it's about that big right there in mine. Anybody, ladies, ladies, what you got? What you got? About that? Okay. Now, look at the next paragraph, which begins, husbands. You see that one, verse 25, where the first word is husbands? Why don't you show me how big that paragraph is? Yeah, yeah, you got to keep reading. You got to keep reading. First thing I want you to understand is this, that submission is not a matter of value. It's a matter of order. This is not about the value of women. God is not saying that women are less valuable, men are more valuable. This is a matter of order. Anything with two heads is a monster. Amen. You either need to kill it or put it behind glass and charge people to come see it, okay? <laughs> I am in Shemokin Dam, Pennsylvania. Actually, this town might be considered Coal Township, Pennsylvania. And this is one of the more difficult places to deliver to. I 
I don't know if you can get understand how difficult it is or if it even looks hard from the camera but and that telephone pole creates a problem also the odd thing is sometimes I can come here and back in the first try for other days it'll take me 8, 10 or 12 times trying to back into here there you go this is my grandson Liam God has called men to headship in marriage. I make no apologies for that, none whatsoever, because I know what that means. And it's not something, I, I assure you, that fills me with pride. Not at all. It, it's something that overwhelms me, as I understand it in its context. You see, there's this drama being played out here. And there are many who would argue that based on that paragraph that somehow God thinks less of women. Women, let me help you understand something. There's a drama being played out here. You get to play the part of the one who was redeemed. We get to play the guy who got killed. Here's the other thing. It doesn't say women submit to all men. That's not what mine says. Yours say that? And that one, that, that, that's, not, that's not in there. Maybe over in Second Hesitations or somewhere it says that, but he doesn't say it here in Ephesians, okay? And again, I, you know, I had a young woman, and I see the, the young people in here, and I've had this conversation before with a young man. A young man come up to me and said, hey, you know, I'm having problems. Me and my girlfriend, we're having problems. What problems are you and your girlfriend having? Well, she just, she just won't submit to me. Well, what makes you think she's supposed to submit to you? Well, doesn't the Bible say that she's supposed to submit to you? No, nope, not unless you put a ring on her finger, walk her down the aisle, and say your vows. Then she's supposed to submit to you, because then you would be her husband. But right now, you're trying to make her your concubine, and not only should she not submit to you, but unless you marry her, she needs to dump you. Give me a kiss. So I'm going to have to go back and look for that. Um, but I know we did record it, and I know it's, it's somewhere. But this is what happened. Uh, I, was telling, I started telling Cy the story, and he said, can you, can you hold that uh, for the show? Because he, he began to get interested, I think. So I was telling <laughs> Cy, there is this website. It's, I think it, a lot of people know about it now. It's called meetup.com where you can actually meet up with people from, that have similar interests as, as you do. You know, if you're in a car club or you're, uh, you know, you're into fishing or you're into dog breeding, whatever it is, there's a group for it. If there's not a group for it, you can start one in your city. So the, I looked at this website and I said, well, let's see what's available in San Diego. So I noticed that there was this atheist meetup that was forming. And so I registered for it. I, you know, I, I went into the site, I registered for an account, and I thought to myself, I'm going to this atheist meetup. I mean, what a better place to find atheists to talk to. So I went, um, went to the site, registered. I, there was a college group in our church of about uh, probably 10 college students at that time. And I said, okay, guys, uh, on Saturday night, we're going to go to North Park, and we're going to go visit this atheist meetup. It's supposed to be like a, a get-together uh, for atheists that live in San Diego. And so you guys, I just want you guys to observe. You don't have to participate. I just, I'm taking you guys so you can just observe what's going to happen. And uh, I wasn't going there like with a militant attitude or anything like that. And in fact, I got an email a couple days after I registered and they said, hey, look, nobody has stepped up for the atheist meetup to be the host. 
<laughs> and so uh, we need a volunteer. So I wrote him back and I said, look, if nobody else is volunteering, <laughs> I'll be the host. <laughs> 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 just tell me. Just, Can we just, open up in prayer, please? <laughs> just tell me. Just tell me what I need to do. And they said, "Well, you need to go out and you need to buy some name tags, and you need to uh, uh, kind of just think of some creative ways uh, to get the conversation started once <laughs> <laughs> once everybody sits down." So we go to this. We go to this. Uh, we go to this meet up right so i'm st i get there early i've got all the stickers with the people's names on them they're coming and i got my sticker on it says gene on it and uh, i got stickers on all my college students and i've got uh so i'm they're coming in oh hey i'm the are you here for the atheist meetup yeah oh great this is going to be great shaking hands uh giving them their their name badges and i said okay we're going to go and they had actually had like a conference room next door where they would host like live bands and stuff like that so they gave us that room because I guess the owner of the coffee shop was an atheist. So there was about there were, there was about fifteen atheists that came out, and I had a group. At, not all ten students came with me. I think I had a group of about six to eight students with me, and we sat down. And I said, "Okay, everybody, my name is Gene Cook, and I'm the host here. So welcome to the first atheist meetup. I hope it's the first of, of many uh, that we can." <laughs> <laughs> it's it's great we all have atheism as as an interest it's great we can all come together and, and share our interests and share our experience so this is what we're going to do we're going to start off i'm going to go to my right and i'd like you to tell me um what your name is and uh how you became interested in atheism and so i had told my eight students beforehand that this is how i was going to open the 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 meetup and i said so when we get to this part Rather than you guys explain how you um, uh, became interested in atheists, I just want you to tell us your name, uh, where you live at, and I want you to tell us uh, that you're a college student and what, what school you go to and what you are studying. So we go to the right. All, all, the, all of the people that I brought from my church are on my left. We go to the right and say, okay, we're going to start with you. So I go to the guy on my right. The guy on my right starts talking. He says, you know, I, I became an atheist uh, when I took some college courses and realized that evolution was a true okay next person so we go around the room we've got people uh opening up women like crying saying i became an atheist because i was raised in the roman catholic church and it was it was uh i had all this guilt as a teenager because i was having sex with my boyfriend and then i realized hey this is all just a big fairy tale and so i was freed from the oppression of christianity and so i'm listening to all this stuff right it gets back to me and i said well as you already know, my name is Gene. I'm the host here. Uh, I became interested in atheism because uh, I'm a full-time pastor. I pastor a church up the road here called Covenant Baptist Church. <laughs> you should have seen the look on these people's face. Two, two, of them, two of them jumped to their feet. I've been deceived. I said, sit down, sit down. What, what do you mean you've been deceived? I've been deceived. I thought this was an atheist meetup. I said, it is an atheist meetup. <laughs> I thought this was for atheists only. I said, where does it say that? It's for people who are interested in atheists <laughs> or interested in atheism. And this guy stands up and he says, look, okay. He was the intellectual one in the group. Okay. You're a Christian? Fine. Do you mind if we discuss Christianity in light of atheism? I said, absolutely. That's what I was hoping we could do. So he starts, he starts talking to me, and I, I'm basically using uh, one, of the, one of the elements of the transcendental argument. I, I decide that I'm going to use logic because he's saying, he uses the word logic a couple times in, in his presentation. So he, he, I let him talk for about five minutes, and I said, okay, well, there's one problem here. You, you referred to logic, and you referred to reasoning, and you referred to common sense, and you referred to truth, and you referred to you're using all this terminology that that is really inconsistent with atheism. And he says, well, how so? And so I said, well, let, let, me, let me ask you this. Where, you know, I, I went back and I said, okay, where do the laws of, are the laws of logic physical? No. So they're invisible. They're, they're immaterial. So I started using the transcendental argument uh, with the angle of logic. So he got upset. He started cussing. He said, I am, we are not going to continue this meetup as long as these people are, because at this point I said, and by the way, these, these, these are just college students from my church. 
Um, but I, we are not going to continue this atheist meetup as long as this guy is a part of it. I said, hold on a second. I'm the host. You, you need to sit down in your chair. You need to sit down in your chair. If you wanted to be the host, then you should have volunteered to be the host. But the only reason why I volunteered is because you didn't want to be the host. Okay? So don't, don't complain about the way that I'm hosting this meeting. All right? Another woman gets up and she says, I'm telling you right now that I, I refuse to have anything to do with this. I said, okay, you can be dismissed. <laughs> so <laughs> I said, it, there's another guy that's standing up saying, hold on a second, guys. Hold on a second. Do you realize, do you realize what kind of impression that we are making, how we are representing atheists or in front of these college students? He says, I'm not really concerned about what the pastor thinks, but we've got a, a group of young people here that are, <laughs> and, and we're coming off like a bunch of jerks. So why don't we just have a peaceful conversation with these people. I said, well, there you go. Now we're, now we're, we're talking reasonably. Let's have a peaceful conversation. So the guy, uh, another guy starts in on me. I shut him down. Boom. Just like Cy does in the video. Uh, just by, you know, backing him into a corner within a number of, a, a matter of three questions. He's got his back against the wall, doesn't know where, where to go. And so at that point, they said, okay, look, this is ridiculous. We are not going to continue this. And um, they said, we want to take a vote right now. How many people here want to continue this? And like one atheist held up his hand. The other, the other one said, nope, they're like shaking their head. It was like an angry jury that was, you know, like a hung jury. Nope, they're shaking their head. We do not want this guy. To, this is not what I came here for. This is not what I signed up for. Blah, blah, blah. Okay. So uh, I said, okay, look, I'm not here to upset people. I'm not here to deceive people. If you guys don't want to talk about this in a friendly manner, I can certainly understand that. So I'm just going to, as the host of this meeting, I'm just going to call this meeting to a close. I'll be at the back door shaking hands as you're leaving. Uh, if you have any questions you want to ask me on a personal level, we can talk about it. But we're going to be right outside there. So we walked to the back door. They decided to have their own meeting. The guy <laughs> said, okay, I'm the new host. We're kind of watching this about 20 feet away. I'm the new host. We're going to have our own atheist meetup. They start arguing about what just happened. It, it becomes a miserable experience for them. And about uh, 45 minutes later, we waited, and then they finally left. So I'm like, uh, I'm, it was nice to meet you, and I'm glad we, you know, if you have any questions, uh, my website is unchainedradio.com. And uh, so that was the end of it. My, the, the, it was a great, it was a great uh, faith builder for these college students when they saw the response. Now, it doesn't end there. So I'm doing this debate with Derek Sansone in La Mesa, California. And all of a sudden, uh, Derek drives up in a car and gets out of the car with a woman. The woman was one of the women that was at that atheist meetup. <laughs> <laughs> I, I walked up to her and I said, you look familiar. I know you from somewhere. She says, you're the guy that hosted that atheist meetup. <laughs> I was like, oh, yeah, that's right. You were there. You were one of the people that didn't want to continue. So anyway, if you want to meet uh, atheists, that's a great place to do it. Just go to your meetup website. They have, I'm, I'm still, I'm still, I still get emails from the Kansas City atheist meetup because uh, I, I was in Kansas City like for a weekend one time, and um, I just signed up for their group just for, you know, grins and giggles. Uh, but I get these notifications saying where they're meeting and when they're meeting and all that stuff. So um, they, they have them in local, your, your local city, I'm sure, if you want to go out and make some new friends. It's a great place. Thank you.
We have an epidemic of unprotected women in our culture being used and abused by men. That is not the picture that the Bible paints. Here's the other thing I want you to understand. The Bible doesn't say, men, make your women to submit to you. It's not what the Bible teaches. Wives, you submit yourself to your husbands. Well, why are all these things important? Because, what's the world out there saying? The world is sort of turning their nose up at this idea of biblical submission because they don't get it. They think it's about women being worth, le worth less than men. It, it, they think it's about women, men, you know, sort of domineering over women. It's not the picture. Wives, you submit yourself to your husbands, which is why I tell young men, I warn young men too. Say, young men, you run across a woman who's not submissive. Well, wait a minute, I thought you said she doesn't have to submit to me. No, she doesn't have to submit to you. Well, then how am I going to know if she's submissive? Watch her with her daddy. Amen, lights. Watch her with her mother and her father. Does she honor her mother and her father? Does she submit to her mother and her father? Now, if she does not honor and submit to her mother and her father who gave her life and food, what makes you think she's going to submit to you? So you watch her. And if she won't submit, run. Do not pass go. Do not collect $200. A man who marries an unsubmissive woman will be a miserable man. And here's why. There's nothing you can do to make her submit. If she wants to stand up and be the head, what are you going to do, arm wrestle her for it? In Philadelphia today, I'm on the north side, making a delivery. I came in on that street right there, back down this one-way street and blindsided my way into this spot here. Kind of tricky. Uh-oh, you kissed the whiskers. <laughs> So one of the ways that people try to get around this is they say, wait a minute, brother, I understand that you, you're reading that there and wives submitting to their husbands and all this sort of stuff, but you know that verse 21 thing, you kind of ignored that verse 21 thing. Verse 21 says, submitting to one another out of reverence for Christ. Can we just for once and for all deal with this? Strap yourself in, this is going to go quickly. People make this argument about mutual submission. There are just a few problems with that line of argumentation. Problem number one, the word that's used here, the word hupotasso, that word submission, it's actually a military term. It means for one to rank oneself beneath another. The term that's used does not allow for mutual submission. Secondly, the context does not allow for mutual submission. You know, when you run to verse 21, in order to explain verse 22, you run into a small problem. And that small problem is this. Verse 21 is the end of a paragraph, not the beginning. Which means you're out of context. So if you want to get in context, you've got to go all the way to the beginning of the paragraph, which is verse 15. Now when you get to verse 15, you see a pattern. And here's the pattern. You see three contrasts. On the third contrast, telescopically, it opens up into three commands. On the third command, telescopically, it opens up into three contexts. Follow me. Look carefully, verse 15, how you walk, not as unwise, but as wise, making the best use of the time because the days are evil. So there, don't be unwise, but wise. Contrast number one. How about contrast number two, verse 17? Therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is. What about contrast number three, verse 18? Do not get drunk with wine, for that is debauchery, but be filled with the Spirit. That's the third contrast. On the third contrast, you get three commands. How are you going to be filled with the Spirit? Glad you asked. Addressing one another in psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. Singing and making melody with all your heart to the Lord. Verse 20. 
Here's command number two, giving thanks always and for everything to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Command number three, submitting to one another out of reverence for Christ. On the third command, you get three contexts. Where do you submit? Wives to husbands, beginning here at verse 22 through the end of the chapter. Context number two, children to parents. Chapter six, verses one through four. Context number three, slaves to master. 6, 5 through 9. Verse 21 is not the umbrella for verse 22. It's the umbrella for verse 22 all the way through 6, 9. Yes. Yes. Say bye bye, camera. Bye bye. Bye. Bye.